My guest tonight is an Emmy and Grammy nominated comedian and actor. She plays Jet Reno. Love that name on the CBS <laughs> All Access show, Star Trek Discovery. Please welcome our really good friend, Tig Notaro. Tig, how are you? I'm doing well. How are you, Conan? I'm doing very well. I'm disturbed by the lack of any kind of furniture or decoration behind you. There's nothing. <laughs> There's absolutely Here. nothing. Here. Wow. You went all out. Yeah. That's my chimney. Um, my bedroom chimney that we had to explain to our kids that Santa, because they were worried about what chimney Santa was going to come down. And, uh, and we explained that Santa won't be coming down that chimney. Hopefully, you know. Right. right. That's good. That's good. Yeah. And yeah. your children are uh, 38 and 40. Is that right? Correct. Today, they both <laughs> celebrating a birthday. You're still excited about Santa. Now, your <laughs> kids are how old? Three years old, right? Three and a half. Three and a half. Three and a half. And I just turned 39, Conan. That's right. You just celebrated a birthday. Happy birthday. Right here in captivity. Well, we don't call it captivity. We call it uh, self-quarantining. Sure. <laughs> you know what I love? Our awkward pauses are even more delicious <laughs> in this format. Do you feel like you are mentally prepared, mentally in good shape for this quarantine that we're all in right now? I think some people are better prepared than others. Tell me, Tig, how are you in this situation? You know, I obviously have not been through this ever before as we know it, but I have... Um, I don't know if you're aware, but I've had some medical issues over the years. I have, I'm aware, yes, yes. <laughs> I've actually been, I think, hospitalized six or seven times in the past seven years. And mm. when I'm feeling better, I, I work a lot, I travel around, and many times during my healing processes and uh, work, I've thought I would love to be home with my family. I would give anything to be home with my family. And um, I was looking at this as being quarantined. And then about a week ago, it dawned on me that maybe I could shift things in my brain and just act like I chose this time off. Right. And, and it has helped me. And I know, again, I've never been through this. So maybe tomorrow there will be a, you know, murder suicide going on, but I, uh, <laughs> uh <-huh. Yeah. laughs> Stephanie and I give each other a couple hours a day alone and that's very helpful. That's key. You have to have some separation because I know you guys are a great couple. You've been, been together many years now, what, eight years now? Uh, seven. I appreciate you keeping track of it though. Yeah. Um, I, it's all I think about every morning. Right. I have, a little, I have a little abacus next to my bed and I slide a bead over and it's dedicated you. to your relationship with Steph. Thank you. So you've only slid the bead over seven times now. Yeah. You got ahead of yourself. I got ahead. It just felt like you guys were together eight. It just seemed like it yeah. was a drag. Seven beads. Uh, but yeah, that's the thing is that a lot of couples right now are going through a tough time because they're in close quarters. Um, that's why I do everything I can to just go into another room. I can tell when my wife has had it with me. Don't yeah. you think it's important to not wait until you're driving each other insane and take the two, just take two hours. Yes. I mean, the two hours really, really, really is making such a difference. And then we miss each other and we're not, we, we're spending four hours apart a day, essentially. Yeah. It's my wife and I, we've switched that around, which is we're only, we decided to only be together for one hour and be separate the rest of the time. And my wife has never that's been- hard. No, she's delighted. She says this is the, <laughs> just the exact amount of Conan that anyone should have in their <laughs> life and no more, so. Do your kids find you amusing? I mean- I can entertain them about 10% of the time and mm -hmm. I think 90% of the time it's contempt and loathing. Just think it's a fine mix. You wanna well, I think 
you know, with certain audiences, that's what I, I've gotten as well for years. Some people don't recognize what I do as comedy. Right, right. Sometimes it helps just to tell them, by the way, this is comedy. Yeah, well, I have somebody announce that before each show. <laughs> Someone says, oh, and by the way, what you're about to experience is comedy. Right, um, if anyone starts to get up to leave in a huff, we uh, have somebody come over the loudspeaker to let people know, <laughs> don't worry, she's getting to a punchline. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I wanna ask you quickly, is this true that you, before this whole nonsense uh, pandemic broke out, you performed in Huntsville, Alabama on the same night as another event. And you described this as what you thought was kind of a rough point in your career. My show was the same night as Wiener Dogs on Ice. Wiener um, Dogs on Ice. That's correct. I've been doing this, I think, 22 years. and. I guess there is a part of me a little surprised that 22 years down the road, I find myself in Huntsville, Alabama, competing against Wiener Dogs on Ice. Um, Who got the bigger draw that night? Wiener Dogs on Ice. Wiener Dogs on Ice did. I sold, I sold well, okay? It was, yeah. it was a fun show. I'm sure it was a great show. I just... Wiener uh, you cannot compete. I to be honest, that is my favorite dog. I love I love a, a long haired wiener dog. So if I if I were in Huntsville, Alabama that night, I wouldn't have gone to my show. I would have been at uh, uh, Wiener Dogs on Ice. I'm telling you, I don't think of, I cannot think of a single show I've done in my entire career that could compete with a wiener dog that has tiny little skates strapped to its paws and then is shoved across the ice. Do you think that's what was happening? How else could it, what else could wiener dogs on ice be? I mean, I just assumed it was just their little paws um, not being able to get a grip on the ice and, and uh, no. but you feel like they were actually skating around. I think when you say on ice, mm -hmm. you're almost legally obliged to have skates involved. Otherwise you could say, you know, uh, whatever. You could say, hey, it's Amy Klobuchar on ice and just whip her out onto an ice rink and watch her slide around on her ass. That's not a nice show. I'd, I'd go to that though. You know what? So would I. <laughs> I wanna talk to you about have Tig at your party. Because Thank you. this is something that you invented quite a while ago that I think is perfect for the time we're in right now. Describe Have Tig at your party. It's basically me as the burning log on the TV screen. Um, when I was touring years ago, I was missing so many friends' parties and I was pretty bummed out about that. And I thought, oh, it might be funny to send a video of myself just in my hotel room and they can put it on the TV like I'm there. And then I thought, well, maybe that would be a good idea <laughs> to sell to my fan base. And yeah. so it actually came out a decade ago, I think, on my first album, Good One. And, uh, and my wife mentioned, maybe I should uh, let people know that it's out there if you're alone and you're ready to party. I am going to be right by your side in your house. We don't even have to socially distance each other from each other. Um, perfect. It's perfect for right now. It is the, you came up with this quite a while ago, but ladies and gentlemen, if you want Tig Notaro at your party, and let's say you're having a Zoom party and like 10 people are there. Oh. You, and you want Tig, uh, one of the funniest people I know to be at your party. This is a way to do that. We have a clip here. Oh. Uh, and I believe this is you. This is a clip from uh, Have Tig at Your Party. Can you tell us anything about this clip? Um, yeah, I'm just standing there. Just standing there. Yeah. yeah. Let's take a look at this clip from Have Tig at Your Party. Wow. 
Wow, that was fantastic. Um, you know what? I wasn't watching. Really? You're in an empty room with nothing else to do, and I couldn't hold your attention. <laughs> Worst yet. I, Worst I yet. Yeah, you couldn't hold your attention. That's the, that's the worst. Now, um, Cone, do you think that Have to Get Your Party is going to blow up now that yeah. people... If I could buy stock in Have to Get Your Party, mm -hmm. if I had a choice right now between buying stock in Have to Get Your Party or Charmin toilet paper, I would go all in on Have to Get Your Party. Thank you. You're a smart man. I am. I'm a yeah. very wise investor, as you can see. <laughs> Some of the most valuable objects in the world behind me. Um, Conan, I have to go. You just made me look like a fool. <laughs> uh, go to tignataro.com and for $5. Five bones. Five buckaroos. Five bones. Five bones. Five bones. Have Tig join you for a party in your home during this time of social distancing. This is the perfect moment for Have Tig at your party. Tig, thank you so much for joining me. Thank you, Conan. You're my favorite comedian who looks exactly like Tom Cruise. I appreciate that so much. Please stay hunkered and safe because, uh, I, and I will, I will, but I hope to you're see you again. Because America needs me? Is that what you were going to say? No, no, of course not. I was just going to say, I hope to see you. <laughs> <laughs> of course not. <laughs> I was just going to say, I hope to see you again. Flash. <laughs> Thank you very much, Tig. Stay sane. Okay, you too, sir. Bye-bye. I bow to you. Bye. Thanks, Tig. Thanks, Conan. Five bones. Five bones. Awkward pause.